be thousands of miles from Wuhan, but the coronavirus has now reached this picturesque ski resort high in the French Alps. Proof this is no longer just China's problem. Five Britons, one of them a child, have tested positive. They were on holiday in a chalet in the town of Les contamines montjoie They'd been in close contact with another Briton. It's thought that man contracted the virus on a three-day visit to Singapore last month. He then flew to the French Alps for a few days before returning to the UK. He's thought to be the first Briton to contract the disease and is now being treated in a London hospital. The positive cases and the contacts this British national had with others, 11 British people in total, were all staying in the same chalet and were hospitalised during the night in three hospitals. They're not in a serious condition. Another Briton, Alan Steele, has tested positive while on honeymoon with his wife on board the Diamond Princess cruise liner. He's now in hospital in Japan. His wife is still on board the ship. Alan's good. Um, like I say, uh, Japanese doctors are looking after him really, really well. His health is fine. Honest to God, he's, he's fitter than most people. Um, we only have coughs due to the air con. 64 passengers have tested positive and are now in hospital. The rest, more than three and a half thousand, are confined to their cabins. A British passenger filmed on deck when he and his wife were allowed out for a walk. He says that only happens once every four days. I know this sounds really strange, but the thing that we both noticed is that our legs were aching because we haven't had that level of exercise you know, we haven't been able to walk anywhere at a distance being confined to the cabin. In Mallorca, another British family is in a hospital isolation ward awaiting the results of tests for the virus. The Chinese authorities are still keen to promote an image of order. This is one of the new hospitals built in a matter of days. Patients with masks are calmly accompanied in for treatment. But 86 people died in the last 24 hours, according to official figures, the largest number in one day. The death toll now at 723, according to the World Health Organization. And on social media, the authorities seem anything but calm. I don't have money to buy a mask, this woman tells police officers as she's arrested. Others are dragged from their homes. 150 Britons are due to be flown home from Wuhan overnight. They'll then be kept in quarantine for two weeks in Milton Keynes. Only three people have tested positive in the UK, and the World Health Organization says the spread of the disease remains slow outside China. Jane Dodge reporting. Well, earlier I spoke to Professor Trudy Lang, director of the Global Health Network at Oxford University. I started by asking her if she was concerned about the new infections in France. It, it, it does and it doesn't. Um, I think it's, we would have expected to see this sort of transmission um, and it is showing that we are seeing person to person transmission beyond those people immediately coming from the centre of the infection in China. Um, but um, not to any sort of huge numbers. Um, and I suppose the good thing is, it's, look, look how quickly it's been tracked. You know, he, he was, was, um, was diagnosed um, in the last few days, and then they found these cases in France. That, does it surprise you that there's such a vast discrepancy uh, between the number of infections in China itself, I mean, over 32,000 cases, and yeah. then the very small number comparatively in the rest of the world? Is that unusual? It's, well, everything's unusual because it's a, it's a new virus, and so we're, we're all watching and seeing how it unfolds. I think that, you know, the numbers in China are, are, are carrying on at the same rate so far, with the same level of mortality. Um, and, but we haven't seen such um, rapid um, transmission outside of China so far, which is very reassuring. Do you think that we're overreacting then? I mean, or that the Chinese are overreacting, you know, shutting down right. entire cities, you know, the entire economy has gone into lockdown at yeah. the moment. Um, you know, we're banning, you know, certain flights coming in from China. Royal Caribbean yeah. Cruises has, you know, stopped yeah. anyone with a Chinese passport or a Hong Kong passport from getting on one of their ships. Should we be more afraid of the overreaction than of the virus itself? China is being incredibly responsible. The whole um, 
aim is to is to halt transmission and, and isolate um, infected people and stop that person to person transmission. And so the really difficult line to tread is how, how far you go with um, you know, shutting schools, stopping travel. Um, and I think the response in China is proportionate. And then in other places of the world, it has to be proportionate um, to the number of cases. You know, here, here in the UK, the, the risk for the individual is still reported to be to be low because it is. And so the, the reaction needs to be proportionate mm. um, and take that really difficult line between, um, you know, really um, stopping transmission as, as, as effectively as possible by limiting people being near each other versus the economic impact of, of an overreaction. So it, it's a very difficult right. call to make. And in terms of, you know, comparing that to the general, you know, the, the annual flu, I mean, I think last year yes. 13,800 people yes. died in the United States of the flu. Yes. So, again, yes. you know, comparing the numbers today of the novel coronavirus to the regular flu numbers, you know, we're nowhere near that kind of seriousness in terms of the number no, of fatalities. Exactly. The number of cases they're reporting of, are, are actual diagnosed cases, so there's probably a far higher number, which would bring the mortality debt rate down even further under 2%, which gets much nearer the normal seasonal flu, which will go through mm. a population. And, and I think so that's a really, um, really responsible and sensible comparison to make. On that note, Professor Trudy Young, thanks very much.